Hello and welcome to my channel. So if I do nothing else in this life, I am going to, number one, use examples of Doja Cat's seemingly terrible um, social media acumen to draw parallels within my own life. And number two, tell you guys a story when I can. And so with this particular event, when I saw it unfolding on social media over the last weekend, I said to myself, I'm gonna revive the old story times um, and because I have something that relates to this. And just to be clear, what this is, if you don't know, last weekend Doja Cat went, you know, she made a splash, another splash uh, on social media. When she went and attacked Noah Schapp, who is a very young actor, he plays on the show Stranger Things, she attacked him for exposing her crush um, and really the DMs that she wrote to him, and we'll get into that, on the actor that plays Eddie Munson, and his name is Joseph Quinn. Now, 100%, when I saw the original TikTok where Doja was talking about, you know, she had reached out to, to Noah, I understood because when I was watching this last season, and if you haven't seen it um, and you like the show, you're a fan of it, definitely worth. It took me a while to watch the whole thing because I'm a little scaredy cat and that Vecna character, the villain in this season, um, I just, <laughs> it was scary to me. So I had to uh, pace myself. But if you haven't seen it, I'm gonna let you know right now, um, I was with Dojo 100%. Um, the little Eddie, when he came on screen, he had me he, he had me spinning, okay? And just to be honest with you, that is every man that I was like in love with in high school. Um, I've always had a thing for the punk rock kid, you know, with like the jean jacket and the pins on his shirt. And what's so crazy is that in high school, they would not give me the time of day because that type of guy, and it's kind of mirrored in the show, but that type of guy usually liked this type of girl, like the blonde haired, blue eyed cheerleader. And even though I was a cheerleader, I wasn't one of the, I wasn't cool and I wasn't white. So um, they definitely were not into me, but I was really into them. And years later, um, when I would get on dating apps, it would always be that type of guy who would want to talk to me of all different races. They'd be like, "Hey," and I don't know, I don't know what that was about, but um, maybe it was just the universe throwing me a, throwing me a bone because they knew how bad, how down bad I was for this type of guy in high school. So really quickly, because I know some of you might be wondering how those little relationships turned out. Um, well, clearly I'm still single, but. Uh, I quickly found out after years and years of constantly matching with these types of men online that their glory days really were in high school. They like peaked in high school. If they didn't come out of high school and like immediately, um, you know, and find, find a productive way to like work in the music industry or the gaming industry or other little industries that might suit what they love to do. A lot of the times they just sort of laid around their hometowns. Um, they, uh, <laughs> a lot of times did, dropped out and maybe got their GED really late in life. I dated one who got his bachelor's degree when he was 45. And um, although there's nothing wrong with that, I will say that there is a delayed adulthood, lots and lots of Peter Pan syndrome with this type of dude, or at least the type of one I would meet. Um, I talked before about how I did a partnership with DreamWorks when I was working with LAUSD, you know, the company that does the Minions. And um, I could tell some of the dudes that worked there as animators had been, you know, um, whatever kind of guy in high school. And so, of course, they weren't single. But um, yeah, the ones that were still on dating apps in their late 30s and early 40s were ones that had taken a really long time to grow up. Uh, they had no car. They usually didn't have an apartment. And it was just like they were still trying to have these experiences and I think that's why they swiped on me in the first place but I just would receive an influx of this type of guy as an adult woman trying to date and I just thought it was it was really uh, ironic but yeah when I saw this character come on screen and it's not even the character it's the way that Joseph plays him it is magnetic it's very I mean hey I went and found out as much information as I could about this man um, I went to his Instagram which I found very easily and I looked him up and found out what I could about him. And uh, yeah, I, I totally understood. And apparently, you know, Doja was going through it too. She was tweeting things like this while she was watching the show. And eventually she decided to reach out to Noah, who plays the character of Will Byers on the show. So most of the Stranger Things kids by now are like in their 20s. Um, or 20, at least 20, 19, 20 years old. But Noah's still young. He's like 17. So she is sending this dude, uh, she, she decides to DM the 17 year old boy and ask him for Joseph's information and ask him if he has a girlfriend and all these other things. 
And initially when that TikTok was posted, a lot of people were like, damn, okay, Doja, you know, wow. First of all, who knew she was so close to this young man? And secondly, she has a crush that seems to be kind of serious. We, I understand. But then Noah, um, apparently he posted their interaction without her consent. And instead of her just kind of laughing it off and moving on, she decided to host a TikTok Live where she called him a weasel. She said that he was exploitive. She said that it was a power play move. He's trying to take advantage of her. And in the end, I think she came away looking like the villain in the situation, looking like a bully, looking kind of dumb because um, he is a 17 year old boy and what was she even doing? But of course, um, what I decided when I was looking at this was I was like, this 100% reminds me of a time in my life when I thought I would just reach out and let somebody know how I felt and I was made to look ridiculous about it. And instead of looking at myself and being like, ooh, I fumbled that. I decided to take it out on that person and be bitter about it for years. And so I wanted to share that story with you guys. But before I do, let me qualify something. So the reason why I'm sharing that story is because it literally happened like 30 years ago. That's right, I was 10 years old when it happened. Um, but it's something that followed me like throughout life, the, the lesson that I learned there. And also, um, I just wanna talk a little bit about my opinion on the whole issue before I go into the story. When I saw the way that uh, Doja, again, she held this live to like roast this kid, I was like, you know what, where were her friends? So like I said, I found his Instagram very easily simply by looking up the man's name. I don't know why she struggled with that. But I feel like women over the past few years, especially with like social media, we've definitely gained a reputation for being like low key CIA agents. We can find anybody, just give me a name and I'll find him for you. Women in general, I think are natural detectives. And so I'm just wondering where were Doja Cat's friends? Like if she had a crush on this dude, why not get your girls to figure out, to figure it out? And he's not that far away. Like he was really easy to find. I feel like she still doesn't really know like her place in society, like where she, like I feel like her career has grown faster than her perception of self. So to Doja, she's still, you know, uh, just a random person who can climb on and talk about whatever and do whatever online instead of the like pop and R&B goddess that she is and rap goddess that she is, excuse me. Um, I don't think she thinks of herself maybe as like Doja Cat. And I say that because if I was her and I wanted to talk to Eddie or to the Russian dude, the Dimitri, now Dimitri was hot. Dimitri's hot, okay? And uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But if I was her and I wanted to get at any of these boys, any of these men in this show, I'm going through my representatives. Like have my people call your people. Isn't that why that term was invented? What is the issue? I didn't understand why she thought it was necessary to, or why she thought it was appropriate to approach a teenager like that. And she admitted that she didn't know how old he was, but still like, I think my past of being straight up just rejected. So I already carry with me a lot of fear when it comes to letting a man know my feelings. And then the fact that like, if I was ever in her position, I would be like super protective of myself. I think I saw that and I just thought the whole thing was so absurd and so ridiculous. Um, and I just felt like she was so outraged by it because in a lot of ways she really just doesn't, I, I, she just, I, I don't know. I feel like there's just something that's not clicking um, when it comes to her celebrity and then like her personal personality. But um, I was with the rest of the internet in general and sort of condemning the way that she responded to this young man. And I was also like, why are you surprised um, that he did what he did? He's a child. That's what they do. And also, why didn't you just get your manager to call his man? You could have, she could have already been on a cute little date with Joseph, who strikes me as the type of person to be really turned off by all of this. So I feel like in the end she caught an L. Um, but anyway, okay, so here's the story time that this whole situation reminded me of. And I wanted to tell it because, you know, it happened so long ago that not only do I think it really, um, <laughs> it speaks to the fact that my, and this is why I started telling romantic romantically tinged story times on this channel in the first place because my romantic life has never been normal. It's always been sort of like something out of some sort of movie, like somebody wrote it. It has never been, you know, just A plus B equals C. Like that's never how my life has gone. So I feel like this story kind of explains like the wild, um, 
and ridiculous nature of what has happened to me um, in my romantic life. I want to say this is my first big, you know, rejection, and it really did write the script for how I understood my, um, I don't know, how I understood what could go wrong in a situation where you let someone know about your feelings. I actually wrote about this for a website a couple years ago when the movie To, how, to All the Boys came out, To All the Boys That I've Loved Before came out on Netflix. Uh, because the young girl in the movie writes a bunch of love letters and the story is about a love letter. And um, when it when they're found, you know, she's initially embarrassed, but all the guys are interested. That's never been my story. So anyway, um, let me tell the story real quick and uh, let you go about your way. So um, I was in fifth grade and, you know, I was bouncing around, you know, just nice and innocent. And one day at lunch, I hear people talking about the topic of going out. Um, we're going out together. He's going out with her. She's going out with him. And I was just like, excuse me, excuse me. Where is everyone going? I had no idea what this term meant. Um, it sounded really crazy and scary. We're all so young. How can you go anywhere? And so somebody explained it to me. They were like, well, we, we don't really go anywhere. We just kind of like see each other at school and maybe we'll hold hands and you know, we're just, I like him and he likes me. And I was, flabbergasted at this news. What do you mean two people like each other at the same time? I still can't figure that out to this day, how that works. It's, it's still, it still never happened to me. But when I was in fifth grade, I was really, I was like, how do you even work that out? How do you get two people that feel the same way, the same? I just, I was, I, I was bowled over. I mean, it was, it was just too much for me to handle. And the young lady talking to me, like waited for me to have my dramatic breakdown about it. And then she was like, yeah, um, I don't know how that happened, but I like him, he likes me, and so we're going out. And I was like, wow. So I never like to be left out of anything, of any social situation, which um, is ironic given how my life has played out. But I, uh, I knew then that I needed to find somebody to go out with. So immediately I began scanning my fifth grade campus. Who will be the one for me? And I also want to say that during this time, um, something we used to all do, this is the fall of fifth grade, to like socialize and get to know each other, is at recess, we would go out on the playground and we would sing top 40 hits to the teachers. So, And one of the songs we sang over and over again was Stay by Lisa Loeb. And I still remember the words to that song almost 30 years later, even though at that point in my life, I wasn't even allowed to listen to the radio, only gospel music and Disney songs but I still remember all of the words of that song. Um, and I learned them there on the playground. Um, and then I would teach the, the kids Motown songs that I learned from my Disney tapes. Uh, at the time, my mom had bought me um, Disney Motown sing-alongs. So I was like, here are the songs I know. Mm. So anyway, um, we would sing, we would perform. Um, we were, we were, <laughs> We, we, that's how we would have fun, right? And so keep that in mind for this story. So anyway, so I start scanning the block and seeing who's gonna be available. And most of the, just like in real life, most of the smart, attractive young men were taken. And there was one in particular though that I was like, mm -mm, he's gonna be with me though. Cause I didn't quite understand that social norm and that rule yet that you can't just take someone who's with somebody else. I thought that once I was ready to be with somebody and I liked them, well, it's just time for me to be with them then, isn't it? And that other person's just gonna have to get used to it. Again, I was 10. So I actually walked up to the girl who explained going out to me in the first place and she uh, was actually the girlfriend or going out with a young boy that I thought was attractive. And I said, hey, I like your boyfriend. I think he's cute. I'd like to go out with him. And she just kind of looked at me like, are you stupid? And she didn't say anything. And, uh, you know, after a while, I was like, hello, I like him and I want to tell him he's cute to me. And so she goes, OK, sure, that's fine. Now, later on, I would learn that she was saying the nastiest things about me behind my back, some of them slightly racist. But at the time, you know, I'm 10 years old and I'm kind of an idiot. So I was like, yay, all right, thank you. Thanks for being so cool about this. I'm, I'm gonna tell him how I feel. And she was like, you do that. Yeah, it sounds great. So I went home and uh, I wrote this man a letter. And not just any letter, I think it was front and back, I think totaled four pages. Um, where did all these feelings come from? I don't know. 
Uh, I literally had not even talked to the young man. It was literally just based on how he looked. But I do want to say this. My birthday is the same birthday as Gabriel Garcia Marquez. If you know him, he wrote Love in the Time of Cholera. He wrote 100 Years of Solitude. I have always had a gift for bringing sort of these phantasmagoric emotional landscapes to life. And I decided to just let it all out on this 10 year old boy, some random day in September in 1994. I wrote him this long letter. I had someone give it to him and I just wanted to sit back and wait for him to fall masterfully in love with me and leave that old girl he was with behind. Well, um, the number one rule that I had for the letter was don't tell anybody what it says. He's a child. He's a little boy. That's the first thing he did. He let everybody see this long novel of a letter that some random child that he had never spoken to, oh, oh, I signed the letter, okay. Stephanie, the black girl who sings at recess. So if you were ever wondering what's, <laughs> how I became the type of person I am. I'm just wanting to tell you, like th those are the kind of little seeds that were planted early on in my life. This feeling of needing to qualify myself as this is what I do, this is my color, this is how I stand out. Will you like me now? But that's how I qualified myself to this young man so he would know who he was dealing with. He immediately showed everybody. I found out that he showed everybody because I had gone over to a friend's house to hang out with her the Friday that I sent him the letter. And his friends came over to the house while we were there. Um, and they were like, you know, that was weird what you did and you, you're weird. And why would you read, why would you say those things? And he doesn't feel the same way. He doesn't like you. And I then went and kicked the little boy's ass. I like knocked him on the ground. I kicked him in his neck. I gave him a spanking. Um, I was like, I need justice today. And I remember after I like whooped him and he had like dirt on his face from, you know, the altercation, he just looked up at me and goes, do you still like me? And I was like, no. And so I went home at the end of that week, dejected and sad. I learned an important lesson. If you have very strong feelings like that about someone, maybe try and start a light conversation with them first. Don't just dump this novel of a letter, you know, expressing your undying love for them. So I thought everything was done and we were all moving on. Um, I went through the rest of, well, I went through a couple more months of the year and everything was fine. And one day I got out of the car and was heading into school and one of my friends stopped me and they said, you have to stop walking right now. And I was like, what's the issue? His teacher found the letter in his desk because he had saved it. And this friend was actually in his class. She told me that the teacher had um, knocked the boy's desk over because he kept such a messy desk. And she picked up the letter, which was in the mess. And then she read it out loud to the entire class. And to this day, that still gives me chills. Like who? does that. When I was teaching, I found a notebook in my class and I opened it and a boy had written these like just very powerful and emotional words to this young girl um, that was also in his class. And I held onto the notebook, like, uh, you know, gathered it, put it to the side. The next day when I saw him, I said, um, this is yours. And I gave it to him and he was like, oh, did you read it? And I said, yeah, I did. But I just wanted, cause I wanted to know whose it was. And he was like, oh, are you going to say anything? I said, no, you guys are both like, and it also happened, I was teaching fifth grade, so nice, nice full circle moment. I said, no, you guys, I said, but those are some big feelings that you have there, and I hope she returns those. Those are very nice things you had to say about her. And um, I also wanna note that after this big letter that he wrote to this little girl, I turned another page and there were nothing but penises all over the page. Um, so that's something else that I learned working with little boys. They will draw a penis whenever they can. But anyway, so um, I did question him about that and he was like, oh, give me my notebook. So whatever, um, I hope he's doing well today. But yeah, I just, if you've ever been in a situation where you've been made to feel like the odd one out, when you see something like this, when, when you see these sorts of things, you get sensitive and you get protect and you don't, you know, whatever. But this teacher obviously was not that type of person. She picked it up, she read everything that I had to say about him to the entire class. I embarrassed the heck out of him and then the friend came and told me, I was so embarrassed. I could have dropped dead right there at the, at like, at the opening of the school. Um, I turned around to like see if my mom was still there from dropping me off. She had left. There was nothing for me to do but go in the building and all day long, 
all week long, actually. That was another, it was a hard week. I just got a bunch of side eyes from the teachers. Not so much from the students. Um, I didn't really hear too much from them, but the teachers were giving me like some interested, like some curious looks. And I remember we went outside, we were like playing four square on the, uh, on the playground and we bounced the ball back and forth. And they were literally staring at me and talking. And I was just gonna brush it off or whatever. And finally one of them, I think she was my language arts teacher. She said to me, like she had heard about it. And she said to me, you got some big feelings. That was, it was very well written. That's what surprised me about it, honestly. And I was like, Okay, you know, I was mortified to hear this. So yeah, that's that little story. Um, and that's what this reminded me of because from that point on, I figured out that when it comes to love and war, when it comes to expressing your feelings, when it comes to wanting the other person to reciprocate, that stuff is literally all up to luck and should be handled as sensitively as possible. Um, little people are ruthless, whether it's little boys or little girls and they really will do anything for the bit, anything for laughs, anything for, you know, and if they haven't been through a certain type of situation, it's often harder for them to expect, to expect them to have empathy. When I was in high school, actually, um, a young man wrote me a really long love note. He wrote me a really, really long love letter, and he said, you know, on the bottom of it, don't show this to anyone. And I remember thinking, um, obviously I won't. Like, I know what that feels like, right? So I told a friend that he'd written it and she was like, well, let me see it. And I said, no, no. And she was like, come on, man, that's just him. We don't take him serious, just, just let me see it. And I said, no, he asked me, he asked me not to show it, so I'm not gonna show it. And apparently later on he charged her up and he was like, did you talk to Stephanie? Did she show you the note? Did she show it to you? And my friend was like, no, she said that you didn't want anybody to see it, so she didn't show it. And uh, his reaction was, good, she can be trusted. And I don't think you should assume that people are gonna have your back, that they're gonna trust and guard your secrets like that, especially when those people are small children. And a 17 year old to me is a small child. I don't care how much money he has or like how much um, exposure he has, that's a baby. And babies are gonna do anything for the bit, anything to make people laugh, anything to make, you know, whatever. And also, again, it was very wild for this pop princess, R&B rap princess, to be reaching out to him in this way when, my God, just just message the man directly, you know? Um, so anyway, that is what this particular situation um, uh, reminded me of. And so I wanted to share. I hadn't done a story time here in a long time. And that's one I don't feel bad about sharing because again, it happened when I was like 10 years old. But definitely that event shaped me into who I am today, which shaped my opinion about what happened with Doja Cat. So yeah, so that was my opinion of that. Um, if you saw it, I would love to know what your opinion was of it in the comments, if you cared about it at all. I was really just embarrassed for her because I feel like she keeps making the same mistakes when it comes to social media, which uh, number one thing is not remembering who she is. Like you're a whole superstar. I feel like a lot of times superstars should take a cue from Beyonce and honestly, just uh, like silence is, is is golden. And I also think sometimes, like with, as far as their management is concerned, you should take a cue from Adele's management team who after she posted this picture a couple years ago, took away all her passwords. They were like, uh-uh, you can't be online no more. <laughs> you don't know how to act. And I think it might be time to do that for, for Doja. Let me know what you thought of the event, if you thought anything at all. And I do wanna say that I had to fight for my life to make this video because um, this is what has been going on in the background. Oh my God, if you're ever gonna get a dog, <laughs> the puppy blues is a real thing, you guys. He is needy. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching.